Exterminate! Exterminate! Nastiest, most evil, most heartless, cruel and cold-blooded of all the Doctor's foes, the Daleks, and therefore logically the most phenomenally popular among dedicated fans and general audience alike. The creation of writer Terry Nation, they were actually designed and built by designer Ray Kusick. And of course, I've got Barry Newbury with me too, who did the histories. But Ray, if I can come to you first, what was the brief when you came up with the Dalek? Uh, well, like a lot of briefs in scripts, very short. Uh, Terry Nation uh, said that um, they hadn't got any legs, basically, and they had a, an eye on a stalk. I telephoned him just to clarify the situation. And uh, he said, uh, yes, that's it, they don't have any legs. And I agreed, and uh, we started from there. What was it that gave you the inspiration? Did you see something that you thought, ah, oh, I like the way that moves, I like the way that looks? No. <laughs> um, there were a group of Russian dancers in London at the time, and they had, there was a peasant dance where they, the girls came out and danced with long skirts, and it looked as though they were on roller skates. Um, Terry Nation had seen that as well, and uh, we both agreed that was quite nice if they could move around without any sort of legs or obvious sort of movement of any sort. Uh, hidden wheels, basically. Um, and did you, is it true that you saw Pepper Pot and you said that's the no, shape? No, totally untrue. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's one of those apocryphal stories. Um, it was after I designed the Daleks and I was explaining to the constructor who was going to make I invited him to lunch, and I was describing the Daleks, and I picked up, it could have been the salt pot, actually, and I moved it round the table, and I said, it will move like that. And that's where it comes from. Did you yeah. ever think they would take off in the way they did and no. still be popular so no. many years later? No, nobody did. But here we are, we are surrounded by dialects. Barry, now you were in charge of the histories, because, of course, at the beginning, Doctor Who used to alternate between the histories and the futuristic stories. Yes. Mm. And you came up with the human horrors. Tell us about some of those. Well, it's a bit difficult to tell you about the human horrors because um, they were just um, people that one would come in contact normally in, in life. But you were Except they were placed the in his. I didn't imagine where they were. Oh, the well, way they were. The way they were. I didn't. Actually, the way they were was the way costume would, would present them. I presented the places in which they survived or lived. Um, for instance, the unearthly child um, was a cave with an inner cave with with um with all their buried well they weren't buried dead all the bones of their dead uh, which presented really quite a problem because um having scoured london for um, all the skeletons that we needed and i'd put on my prop list rather hopefully um 250 skulls <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get them i bet well i did uh, alan mancy <laughs> was my buyer and i i said uh well, if we can't find it, how do, how do we get them? And he'd found some chap in Surrey who had a vacuum forming thing in his garage. And, uh, and he made all... them off, we stuck them together with sellotape and painted them. And it all yeah. came right as it always did with Doctor Who. Back to Debs. Mm. 